Welcome back to our ever-deepening meditative journey into the missing source science, the source code of reality itself in a global light across a planet, 2,500 years, for example, of our greatest geniuses, scriptures, enlightenment teachers, calling us to cross into the source code, the missing code, the code in God talk, it's the God code, it's a Buddha code, the Christ code, Allah code, Yahweh code, Brahman code, Om, Tao. All of these are alternative names for the infinite force. And the visual behind me, again, this is a meditative journey. It's not just information, it's attempting to actually tap the source and join me in this journey into the source to, to see what has been missing all these centuries. And this is really something, a new perspective in a global light to see the unum source of all of our worlds and cultures and narratives and scriptures are coming from a profoundly unified, infinite force field, which is reality itself, by whatever name. And we don't have to use spiritual talk or God talk uh, to get, we can use science talk to get to the fundamental field of reality, the deepest cosmos. Uh, it, it's called first philosophy, ontology, the science of being. It is a quest for primary being. That's a way to put it. It could be called God, Yahweh, Allah, Om, Tao, Buddha nature. Buddha doesn't speak of God. So it's important in the beginning of this third movement, we're, we're, we're going to enter into three meditative movements. We began, this is the, actually the, the fifth uh, moment with you. The first was an opening prologue to set the stage for the meditations and the journey into the missing source science and source code of all codes in a global light and to show why this has astounding disclosures for the current state of our human family in our cultures and in our worlds and institutions and in our religious life and educational life and raising our children all across everything uh, turns upon are we tapping the fundamental code of reality the source code and therefore getting access to the unified force the infinite unifying unum force that holds it all together because if we don't have that things are fall apart and we're not accessing the code of the source and to be the great collective wisdom of our scriptures and enlightenment and wisdom is that if we're desourced from the source of reality and the code of reality, we're going to be suffering all forms of dysfunctions, wide-ranging pathologies in our human life until we grow up and mature and move from our dominant current pre-codes, codes which bind us and hold us back and colonize our minds and our freedom and right to life, liberty, uh, freedom and well-being, to the source code where we flourish in, in deep dialogue life, highest science and enlightenment. This is enlightenment for all the people. We humans are logo sapiens. And this is a democratization of enlightenment. It's not for a few elite, it's for everyone. It's a human. To be a logo sapien is to say I am and to wake up into the code and find your code and your password into the source in all of our vast diversity and yet still connected in the infinite unifying unum force, which is unum pluribus. And so in this, we've had the, an opening a prelude, and then we went into the first uh, deep dive into uh, the missing source science. And to see some of the astounding disclosures that come from tapping this global light of Logosophia, of the code, the missing code. And then the second meditation, we went deeper to see why is it that our great geniuses have been calling upon humanity urgently to come out of the dysfunction and separation from the source to rise into the higher code of mindful, awakened, I am life, to tap into the code and not stand on the outside and to continue to be dominated by, by codes which are pre-codes and, and not really coded in the source. And we began to see in the second meditation the depth of violence if our code is slashing one another and ourselves and other worlds and the other. And most of all, the source. To slash the source is a devast devastation for a human flourishing. And in the third, after the second meditation, we ended that meditation with this visual. And I'm going to just pick up from, that was the end of the second meditation, into the, the deep source of, of suffering and dysfunctions and pathologies when we're desourced. And the prior follow-up was a, about a 30-minute transition to recollect where we journeyed and to pick up again and remind ourselves that source science, unum science, getting to the source code, is a new breakthrough in our human journey, in a global light. 
and that we need it now to flourish and to survive on the planet as a human family. And in this transition, I tried to show that the, the, the movement of our evolutionary journey as humans, our evolution itself and our maturation is to go from being cut off by the codes that hold us here to move into the connected infinite space. Whatever name we use for the infinite, that is where the I, the I am, can flourish and move from I cut off to I awakened. And our cultures that are here in this space, our life is all proceeding in this severed space. And we saw at the end of the second meditation, and now we're beginning to enter into the third finale of our journey. And in this case, uh, we saw the, in the transition reflection that the human revolution for all cultures, all religions, all worlds, all institutions, all political forms across the planet, if we are stalled in a, a mind-operating, culture-making technology of consciousness and, and mind and word and the lens of the mind, if we're here, we're going to be fragmented and broken and dysfunctional. And the urgent journey is to move across into the higher code of the source, which is the, the unum, pluribus. And that's, that's one word, the unum pluribus, the infinite unum. The consensus of our wisdom and scriptures is on the ground floor of reality is the infinite. If you call it Yahweh, Allah, Tao, Om, Brahman, Buddha nature, whatever name you use, we use Allah, for that infinite, it's going to be infinite unum, infinite one, because you can't divide the infinite. That's one of the great disclosures of source science. And to get, you can't get the unum power here. This is disunum, this is desourced, this is cut off, and this is fragmented by this mind operating process. So the journey we saw at the end of this second movement, as we now enter the third, it's the human journey for all humans and all cultures and all religions, all worlds, all institutions, all politics. If we're here, it's going to be dysfunctional, we're going to be in war, we're going to be in violence, and holocaust and genocides, racism, sexism, homophobia, you name it. All of these forms of misology, misogyny, misology is the, the fear of, of, of reason, of the logos, of crossing, making this crossing. So this gesture represents that when we can step back from this motherboard, that's this motherboard, and blossom into our fullness, and that's the double brackets. So that's what the double brackets means. It's a missing code. I mean, we, we've played with the idea, imagine, here are some of these movies like Contact and Arrival. Uh, what, what if a, a code were from other beings coming to Earth and using a code and saying, this is the code of Logosophia. This is the code we need, and we're trying to take it here. We won't get the code. We have to enter into to get. So the double brackets indicates the unum pluribus code of high culture, of awakened logosapien beings. When we are mindful and enter the light of logosophia and, and wisdom, and therefore heads up and, and in the I am space as awakened and mature human beings and culture in this space. With, with, in Logosapien uh, logo space. This is a space of deep dialogue. This is a space of monologue. And monologue divides and separates and polarizes. And our great scriptures, and one of the main points I just want to say as we enter this third uh, meditation, we want to go from the, the, the whole planetary view and to take the example of American culture as one site where we could just look into that for a moment and ask, are we living the high culture of our constitutional thinking, as, for example, articulated in, say, the 1776 Declaration of Independence. What does that mean? And I'd like to begin by looking at that and using the American example. Let's look at American culture. Are we united? Is it one nation under Unum, under God, under Source, under Logosophia, the Logos Code? Are we a culture in the Logos Code, the Code of Reason? the code of wisdom, the code of the high word, where humans are noble and free, and life, liberty, well-being, in the place of being. This is the place, Logos is the place of being. Om, Tao, Yahweh, Allah. All of these names are names for the high space that is our, our, our base, our source, that is sourcing us in every way. And this is one of the great disclosures of source science 
the missing science that takes us here. And now we can see the connections and the unity of all of our diverse worlds that are going on and being made across the spectrum of our cultures. The different worldviews that we have that comes into the space and we don't know how to connect in this multicultural, pluralistic space. Here, it keeps us divided in monologue, and not able to rise into deep dialogue. This is a place of peace, love, flourishing, being, well-being, life, liberty, freedom. It's huge. We can't be free here. We're colonized. And one of the amazing disclosures that came out in our second and first and second meditation into source science and to first philosophy in a global light, because infinite is global. Global means all possible worlds. So one of the principles and axioms we got is that if you, when we tap the code of the source, let's, let's use the Logosophia from the Greek. And we could, we could say Yahweh, Yahweh, we could say Allah, we could say Christ, we could say God, we could say Buddha nature, Dharma, Tao. We could use all of these names because they're all, because it's infinite, they're deeply connected in infinite unum. But the infinite unum is infinite pluribus. That's why unum pluribus. We're preparing for our third meditation now as we enter, which is let's look at the wording of the opening of the 1776 Declaration of Independence and wonder, is it being spoken here in the monologue space, which is pluralized and divided, or is it speaking from the, the light of global reason, of enlightenment, of logos, the place of self-evident truths for all humans, Endowed by this source, that's the creator. We don't have to use God names. The fundamental field is infinite and sources everything. That's one of the great principles of source science, unum science. Because it's infinite, it's infinitely unum. Because it's infinitely unum, it has infinite diversity within it, but not scattered as it would be here, but united in the unum pluribus. That's a principle of the code of the source which is this infinite code that surrounds all life, all narratives, all scripts, all constitutions, all gospels, all Bibles, all scriptures, east, west, north, and south, all narratives, all belief systems, all paradigms, all stories. It's all situated within the infinite space, the infinite word. If in the beginning is a Logos, the infinite word, Om, Tao, Yahweh, Allah, whatever name, it's infinite, it's, it sources all possibilities. And in our human journey, we saw that as we rise into the information age of information technology and processes in the space, <clears throat> we're still not maturing fully into the source of that information, into the source of all of our life in every breath, in every grain of sand, in every pulse of life. It's being funded by the source. We cannot be outside of the source. And that's astounding that all worldviews, all stories, all narratives, all paradigms, whatever we use, whatever terms they use, worldviews, cultures, religions, whatever it is being sourced by the source. It's, it's source all. The infinite is the source of all possibilities. And if alien intelligence were to come to Earth, they would have to also tap the, the unum source because it's the infinite source. You can't step outside of it. And so it was been extremely difficult to get to tap the code. That's why I've introduced double bra brackets, uh, listening to our great wisdom teachers and scriptures to, to mark this level of technological advance in mind processing, word processing, life, experience, culture. Double brackets in the Logos code. That's a code. That's a missing code. That's a God code, Christ code, the Buddha code, the Om code, whatever name we use. A code is a, 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 a processing law, grammar, that generates all of the possibilities. And the codes we use here in information talk about it, which produces monologue and separation and polarization and divisions and is a form of violence because it slashes the source. This technology, these codes, it's a code of ordinary culture making where we 
name things and put them in the box and have our information, have our narratives and our stories. We have objectified, we have, we have entities and it, and it's I, it, and not I, thou. We've been through this before. I'm just reminding us about the main point uh, before we turn the page to create a fresh visual and look with fresh eyes now with all this journey and what's going on in the American cultural scene. Are we one nation, pluribus unum, under logos, under source, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? Or are we divided? Are we still colonized by a technology of culture making that keeps separating and dividing our different perspectives and narratives and interests and worldviews so that the space is inherently divided against itself and polarized into colonized col cultures, cultural colonies and clusters within the space that cannot find the unity of connectivity in diversity, unum pluribus, as a code for being in the source where we have unity in diversity in the awakened culture, as logo sapiens rather than mono sapiens, ego sapiens. That's what we're going to journey now. And this gesture indicates that as we evolve and mature as a culture, we are always within the space and under the influence of the infinite force. The infinite force is a force of reality of being itself. We don't have to use God words or even get into spirituality because you'd be basically ontological science, the language of being and reality. Being is infinite and that's why it ends up being infinite because it's infinite, it's infinite in every possible way. Does it have intelligence? Infinite intelligence. Is your time infinite time? Space, infinite space. Energy, infinite energy. Goodness, infinite goodness. And it, it surrounds all possibilities. So we cannot breathe without it. We cannot say one word. We can't have a thought, any thought, any paradigm, any worldview, any belief system without the source. Unum, holding it together. But while we're here, we can't recognize it. When we're in this space, this colonized space of being cut off from the source and using our, our language and our thoughts and our information, the culture-making tools of monologue here, we cannot see that we're in that space. So we're in an invisible crisis because our great teachers are saying, this is a crisis. It's been going on for millennia. We cannot flourish as humans in cultural spaces and life personal spaces here. We cannot, to get well-being, we've got to go into deeper intimacy with being, communion with being. We've got to say, I am, and enter into being in a direct way. This is cut off from being. So when you are a being, you're still in the box, in a colonized space that works with information and stories and narratives. And we could read our scriptures and documents and constitutions here, but it's not going into the deep source code. So the, the thought in transition that I'm leaving us with <clears throat> is that every breath we take is within the unum space, the unum pluribus. We cannot be outside of it. And whether it's a point here, it's going to be infinite, fractal interconnections. And if we're in this cutoff space here, then we're not going to experience the connectivity of the unum flow. And if the circuits are break, broken, we're going to fall apart. And culture is going to be in shambles and pieces here. And we're going to take a look at the American cultural scene as an example of a human drama for all humans and cultures. Are we crossing into the high space of peace, nonviolence, compassion, ethics, rationality, science, knowledge? Because we'll see one of the disclosures of, of the, the Unum principle is that without the Logos code, we can't have truth and knowledge, because what we have here is opinion. In monologue space, the best we can do is to have my opinion, even though I'm taking it to be knowledge or my science. I'm Newton, I got my Newton science. I'm Einstein, I've got my Einstein science. I change my lens, I have a new, different science. Whatever the narrative, that is my truth. But it's, it's pre-truth, it becomes opinion. And that's one of the devastating disclosures of Unum reason. The journey of reason is to tap the onam, the logos, the code of logos, the God code, the Christ code, the Buddha code, the Om code, whatever name it is. If we don't have this code, we're not going to have knowledge because there'll be disconnection. 
if this technology, which colonizes the human condition, dominates our lives and we live our lives here, we're not going to be able to know. We're not going to be able to have rational connection. Our science is going to be premature and it will remain opinion. And the best we'll have here is sophistry, opinions, belief systems, fighting it out for the honor of being the truth in this space and not going into the unemployables where our diverse narratives and cultures and religions can find their deep, nonviolent, honorable interconnection in the unemployables code. So please, as we turn this page, remember then, so what is the journey of wisdom? It is to let go of this dominant space, which would then free us to move into this, this space. And this, uh, this representation, which is taken out of here, we're always, we can never be outside. So your high self, our high self, when you say I, when we say I, here, in this space, whatever our narrative or narratives, when we're using this technology, that's what the single brackets represents. The single brackets represent we're in this technology. The double brackets represent we've crossed, we've made the all-important crossing into the zone, into direct, intimate I am contact and I thou, we're the source with reality. Coherence. We are experiencing and living the unum, the flow. It's a continuum. The infinite flow of reality is a continuum. Unum is a continuum. Continuum means space and time cannot be broken. Space time. And mind and time, mind time. Mind and word, mind word. Word and world, word world. All connected is a continuum. So in this language space, every word we use, like the word time, Single bracket, when you cross into double bracket time, we go into deep time, where all moments are connected, past, present, future. And that's the power of now. Now here, past is over, future is not yet, now is fleeting, right? because everything keeps breaking down into, into its parts. It's partitioned with identity, A is A. And that leads to an either or. A, not A. Either A or not A. So to play the game here of A, I am A, me, I, not I. And that keeps repeating all through this technology. Socrates is wise, Socrates isn't wise, is or isn't. Wise or unwise. So there's an either or that keeps repeating and you can go from one extreme to the other and keep going back and forth in this cultural space and you're not getting out. So if you have, when we look at the American scene, if we have, say, the Republicans on one side and the Democrats on the other side, and it's a divided state of culture, and there are two different ideologies, and what's true for this side is not true for that side, because this opinion rules over that, and you spin doctors to really t to, to fight it out, which is the truth, are there alternative truths, that kind of thinking, that's a symptom of being in the broken, polarizing, either or, and we can swing back and forth here, but we're not getting out. So we'll see in a moment as we enter into the a diagnostic using this you know, new clarified global source science principles and axioms of infinite is infinitely unum and infinite unum is infinite pluribus and it's infinite pluribus unum it can't be divided and that's where we find we the people. We can't have we the people here. We can't have freedom in a slave mind space, a colonized mental space, culture space, a monologue space. We can't have dialogue here. And so restraining, and we're in a deep crisis, that's the invisible crisis of humanity. And in the American scene that we look at now, it's our invisible crisis. And, and, and part of the magnitude of the crisis that's been going on from the inception of our experiment together <clears throat> is that if we can't see it, how can we deal with it medically? Our great teachers, our wisdom teachers, our physicians, metaphysicians, first philosophers. Jesus is a deep ontologist. Buddha is a deep ontologist calling us to being. When Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that's ontology calling us to life, truth, liberty. When Buddha is, is enlightened and sees this is suffering and we have a choice and we can rise to mindfulness in the Buddha zone, and yoga is saying you can leave this and move into the, the, the Atma, the Om space. And Mahatma Gandhi is tapping this and bringing it into the politics to liberate India, for example. 
And Martin Luther King is picking up on it with Gandhi and bringing it into the civil rights. And I'm going to see, there's a culture, America is coming. Is America here or is it here? Is America a single bracket cultural space for we the people? Are we we here? Can we truly be we if the premise is we the people hold the power and the consent of the governed is by we the people, given by we the people to protect life, liberty, freedom, and well-being? Happiness is well-being. We can't be happy here. It's broken. Our being is broken. This is a repeat of some of the main themes. And we can't breathe or live or have a vision or see or speak or use one word without the source. The source code makes it possible to have any worldview, any belief system, any science, any technology. It comes from the deep technology of what is the ultimate technology of culture and consciousness that makes our worlds. If we want to change our world from here to there, we've got to change our code. So our American version of the crisis, the invisible crisis, is that we have to step back and see this picture. This comes with seeing the, the, the code of the infinite, the Logos code, all of these great... Once you see the, the, the ground floor of reality is, cannot be made finite, you can't bound it, because what's on the other side? This space is not a boundary, it's a, it's a gesture of the infinite. This is the infinite space. And therefore, it's a source of all possibilities. There could not be one word without this force. No one, not one thought. Nothing can show up that is not sourced and held. And once we begin to, 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 to mature to be able to see that and make that link, that we, can't, we can't see that link here. We can't see Unum power here. We've got to go into the Unum power. To, I am. When we say I am in the proper coded way, when we got our access code to source, which is our human journey, we become mature human beings. And that's the call of our great teachers. And they all saw we're living in a, in a, in a in a human crisis that's painful, that's pathological, that's dysfunctional, a space of suffering. Buddha wanted to end the suffering. Jesus died for this. Socrates is drinking hemlock to get us to the Logos <clears throat> because it's all important to, to tap the Logos code. So when we saw, we'll see in a moment, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all humans are created, equal and endowed by the Creator, the Source, with unalienable rights, of life, liberty, well-being. That's beautiful, powerful unum talk in the pluribus unum of the Logos Code. It's not here in the box. This is the place of colonized life, oppression, brokenness, lack of religious freedom, lack of free speech, all of the quest for a free human space, which is the founding of the American journey, for example, but really for all people. That's the invisible crisis. And the fact that it's not visible because to see it with these eyes, to see it with double bracket eyes, makes it visible. Now you can see the medicine, as our great teachers did. Now you can see our great teachers and scriptures. Wow, they're in concurrence. They are in consensus. In, the, in their diversity, in their pluribus diversity, they're still getting the unum of the place of love and compassion. Jesus is speaking this. Buddha is speaking this. Krishna is speaking this. Socrates and Plato moving into the place of, 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 of an awakened culture where wisdom presides and there can be justice in the society, in the pluralist. So the invisible crisis is severe because as long as we stay within, under the sway of this bondage to the space, we cannot solve the problems here. We can't even see the depth of the diagnosis because it is the technology itself that's generating our breakdowns and pathologies. And that's the medical science of source Ontology, first science, source science, first philosophy, has the vision and the code to diagnose and see the brokenness of the space and, and therefore the, the, the abysmal fragmentation of all kinds of violence in our human condition. Holocausts, genocide, ethnic cleansing, racism, sexism, homophobia, misogyny, misology, breakdown, objectifying one another slashing our children with this technology. If we don't want to have child abuse, right? Because our children are sacred Logo sapiens and we are dominated by a deeply implanted motherboard that we don't realize and we make ourselves and reproduce ourselves and our culture and our cultural reproduction here, that we're slashing each other. We're slashed by being myself here, I'm slashing myself from being here. We are self-slashing and slashing each other and polarized and we're not one people. We can't be, and so it's not governable. 
The problem is not in Washington, D.C., it's in the culture itself. Washington, D.C., if we say you have to drain the swamp, that is a misdiagnostic. If we see the American polis is, is polarized in many ways, not just two, bipolar, multipolar, whatever party you're in or not in, right, the fragmentation of our subcultures and cultural colonies, are we really together as we the people? So the crisis is severe and it's not sustainable because a broken culture, a fragmented, polarized culture cannot survive as we the people. You can't be in sophistry and, and, and opinion without tapping the logos where truth and justice and knowledge and science and first medicine opens up. So that's the invisible crisis. We're going to talk about that. And what I'd like to do is to turn the page and start over. And now we're going to speak about our unfinished American evolution, revolution. So I'm going to read this, and uh, hopefully we can put it up on the screen for you. You can read along, but, but just bring it up. Just, just, just bring up a search. <clears throat> I have a copy here of In Congress, July 4th, 1770, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States, the colonies that may still be colonized. The 13 United States of America, and are you united here or are you united in the UNUM? is the question. Just please listen to the language, because when I read this four years ago, I <clears throat> deeply have been concerned for years after 9-11 and ongoing breakdowns and back to the 60s and the protests for the war in Vietnam and, and all of these decades as a first philosopher living through this culture of mine as an American citizen. I never really stopped to study the Declaration. I knew it was a declaration, we celebrate July 4th, and it's, we put off fireworks, and we, say we, we, we broke away from the British monarchy, and we were free. And that was the declaration. So, so you, you, we think it's about, uh, the British have to go. We're not gonna be uh, subjugated to any other, we're gonna, we the people are gonna govern ourselves, was allegedly what we're saying. But four years ago, going deeper and deeper as a first philosopher, into our great texts, looking at the gospel of Jesus. And I can read it here, or you can read it here. Jesus can be here or in the deep space. Buddha can be here or in the deep space. The Quran can be here or in the Quran. If you look at Rumi, the great Islamic mystic, Rumi, the, the, the mystical uh, in Islam, he says, there is a field beyond judgment, belief. I'm paraphrasing. I'll meet you there. Beyond division, I'll meet you in that field. Rumi, for example. Because Islam is to surrender to Allah, and Allah is infinite, and the infinite cannot be broken from Yahweh and Allah and Brahman and Om and Tao and Buddha nature. You can't break the infinite. So the great, the great teachers say you've got to separate. All of the great teachings say you've got to separate from a, a dysfunctional, mental, cultural, personal technology of, uh, of, of language and lens and mind and making our worlds to rise to a higher, awakened, enlightened code of tapping the source, in communion with the source. So in that light, here's the opening. So, so four years ago, 2012, I was part of a, a, a world streaming event of 2012, uh, birth 2012, the awakening uh, of humanity, allegedly the Mayan calendar. It was a big, exciting moment. And many people felt, well, after 20, with 2012, there's going to be a prophetic fulfillment of a, a great awakening uh, across the planet, energetically. And so I was part of a, a group of elders who were going to have a world streaming. And they asked me, Ashok, in Philadelphia, my home is in Philadelphia at Haverford College, founded by the Quakers, outside of Philadelphia. I've been teaching 49 years here. And four years ago, in 2012, on this occasion, I said, well, Philadelphia is the birthing of American democracy. And if we're going to have a, a great awakening, 2012, for humanity, let's, when, you come, when, you, when the streaming goes across the ocean from the Europe to come to Philadelphia, I will <clears throat> work on drafting a declaration of interdependence, which is on the flip side of the declaration of independence. So, to really do conscientious work, I felt, look, we don't need another declaration. We need to understand our original declaration. 
and I, I started to study it fresh, with fresh eyes, looking at it with source vision, and unum vision, and understanding the Logos code of reason, and realizing, could, could it be that in this period of, of, of an emerging European enlightenment of the thinkers and the forming of this, the, the, the constitutional thinking of the founding of the vision of the principles and axioms of America, that these founding fathers and mothers were tapping the zone and, and calling us to create a culture, pluribus unum, of life, liberty, freedom with human dignity and leave the colonized life and slavery. And so I started to read the Declaration. I was astounding. I had fresh eyes, and I, I saw a whole depth of meaning, seeing it with double brackets, and tapping the logos, and tapping the light of reason, and not seeing it in, in, in the monologue space as another text down here, but up here. And I went to Christ Church the Constitution, near Constitution Hall in Philadelphia to feel the energy and sat in the Christ Church where the drafters of our declaration, our founding visionaries, sat in great despair at one time when they felt they were losing this revolutionary war and they would be executed for treason. And they're sitting in that place together in worship, in that deep dread of not knowing if they will survive. And I sat on the bench of George Washington and Jefferson's seat was here and the, the guide showed me where historically they sat and I was in the midst of that energy and I, I began to really feel that these, these great founding visionaries were tapping the logos. And so I drafted a Declaration of Interdependence because the opening of the Declaration of Independence was calling for us to separate. But it was not to, just to separate from the, the, the monarchy, the British Empire. It was to separate from any political band that brings us together that compromises our life, liberty, well-being, and happiness uh, with human dignity and freedom and autonomy. It's the principle of separation. I heard that echoed across the planet for centuries. All of yoga is, we've got to separate. All of Buddha, we've got to separate. Socrates, we've got to leave the cave and separate, cross into the Logos. Abraham, we've got to let go of Isaac and enter into the Yahweh. The principle of separation is huge and deep in our human evolutionary journey. We must separate from what? From a thought form and technology as a stage of our development that is holding us in bondage and colonized life and cultures and not allowing us to be free humans in life, liberty, and well-being. And so when we are separate, if we separate, if we are able to truly accomplish separation and independence from technologies of culture and life that hold us bondage, then we, what do we discover? Interdependence. And that is a journey across the planet of our great scriptures and wisdom. I felt that the Declaration of Independence was tapping the wisdom of the planet and the considered opinions of hum humankind for all humans. It was a wonderful ecumenical document. Ecumenical is here, not here. When we cross into this space, Here's what it says, and if we can get it on the screen, you could read along. It's July 4th, 1776. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. There's no talk of the British here yet. This is a general axiom of human liberation. In the course of events, in the course of evolution, in human historical development, if we find that we are in a political band or convention or code that holds us captive, and we're not independent and free, to which the laws of nature is using that talk. It's not yet religious. And of nature's God, in interesting language, entitle them. So Logo sapiens are entitled to, to 
independence and autonomy and, and dignity and freedom. But if something compromises any political convention in life, any code that violates that, it, it's our duty to separate. To declare the causes, what are the causes of it, and to separate. That is a global axiom of wisdom and enlightenment. It continues. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator, by the source, with certain unalienable rights. That among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, well-being. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Now governments come in, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, from the people who hold this nobility and freedom. That whenever, whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is a right of the people to alter or to abolish it. For any government or any political institution begins to compromise that dignity and freedom, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles. This is huge language. Its foundation on such principles, axioms of life, liberty, freedom, organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Homeland security, safety and happiness, well-being. Where are we safe? Are we safe in a colonized cultural space of fragmentation and division? Or are we safe in the I thou sanctuary of nonviolent, the peace zone of love and compassion and ethics and reason and knowledge and truth? Where are we safe? And where is our well being? Here or here? It continues Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be charged, changed rather, for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. So our normal patterns to which we are accustomed will give us a lot of tolerance of, of being violated and suffering evils. It's a principle of conservatism. Don't do this lightly. Don't overthrow any institution uh, that holds your culture together lightly. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, when we reach a point where we become under a despot of tyranny, a totalitarian, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. I'd like us to think about that. I hope you can read this while I'm holding this so you don't have to only follow me, but I, I hope we can put this up on the screen for us. And on the other side, I drafted in that spirit once I began to see this missing deeper constitutional language of tapping the source, the zone. This is the place of self-evident truth for all humans under created by the creator, the source of all life and all views and all languages and all forms. That's the source of all. And that's the unum pluribus. One nation under unum pluribus comes from this space and not from this space. So my declaration of interdependence, once we leave this place, if we can, and rise to the occasion into the missing code of the unum pluribus, logos code, the source code, the God code, the Christ code, the Buddha code, the global code, and have culture here. That's when we are interdependent. The I thou is interdependence with nature, with the source, with reality, with being, with each other, with the cosmos. This is interdependence. This to be independent of this is to be discover our interdependence that was already there. That's the infinite. So wherever we are in culture, 
and this is familiar now, this technology, which means when we're here, we're using an operating system, a motherboard, and our journey is to cross into the deep dialogue space of I and the other, rather than the I and the it, objectified. Is America here? Is America in this space? Or is America here? Unum pluribus. One nation under source. Indivisible, cannot be broken. This is broken and split with freedom, liberty, justice for all, and well being. This is the right to well-being and happiness. Being is here. Ill-being is here. This is I, it. So everyone is slashed. The lens we use is slashing. So with our first two journeys into the meditation one and meditation two, we developed this and showed this is pathological and dysfunctional and broken and polarized. And so people here, cultures here are separated. All of the diff diverse cultures that we have in a pluralistic culture, right, cannot connect because there's no unum. If we're not tapping the unum power, which is the in infinite unum, then we're going to be divided. So this is, America here is the divided states, the divided colonies, the divided cultures, the divided worldviews, the divided ideologies. This is ideology. What is an ideology? Philosophers have articulated this. An ideology is a worldview, a narrative, a belief system, a narrative that, that we live in. It's a cultural narrative, a belief system, a paradigm, whatever name you want to use, a meme, a code. This is a code. This is where we say A is A. That's the law that rules here. A is A. Rather than saying a deeper law, which is A, is A. America is America. Because double bracket means everything is interwoven, interconnected. Pluribus unum. Nonviolent, unified peace zone of compassion and love and care and honor and dignity and sacred. This is sacred space and this is desecrated and broken and divided. So it's a question I'm asking. We, we, we treasure the scripture of our constitutional language and our founding axioms. Is this document speaking here or is it reflecting here? The place of, of unum, unity with diversity, pluribus. Because every, every script, every scripture, every, every document is always under the influence of the infinite force. So I'd like us to think in this meditation. And let's, let's go into the American uh, version of this. And when we're doing this, remember, it's a human challenge across the planet for all cultures, all worlds, all narratives, all disciplines. If your discipline is here, if your science is here, if your biology, your physics, your chemistry, your computer science, whatever your science is, your sociology, your politics, your anthropology, your, your humanities, your English, your philosophy, if it's all here, then you're still, if your education is here, laboring under this technology of literacy and language and word, then it's going to be broken and fragmented. If we want integral education, you have to go into the integral space. You can't have integral without the unum connectivity and flow. That is where, the, the, when you cross into this language, into this zone, it's non-dual, it's integral, it's holistic. You can't break it apart. Every word here, when you cross from here to that place, we, we should illustrate that with time. Time here in this is going to be past, is over, present, is moving, future is not yet. But when you go into time, double bracket time, every point is connected. That's the depth of interconnectivity. Connected. When we say it's a connected universe, you can't get that here. 
when you go into the deep, the deep place of infinite unum, every point is touching every other point. And that's what leads to the I thou space. The thou is already within you. You can't sever it. The future is already in the present and in the past. You can't break the moments apart in integral time. So if we want integral intelligence, which is integral rationality, reason, reason is, is, is the Logos code is integral. And Plato saw that when we tap the Logos, we've got the unified intelligence to see the connections and laws and principles in enlightenment where the lights go on on human intelligence and we become Logos sapiens, material Logos sapiens. So the journey of a human is from here into that space. So when Martin Luther King saw the broken America here and said, I've been to the mountaintop, I've seen the other side, right? Using his Christian uh, vision uh, uh, as, a, as a theologian and, uh, and a religious visionary in the Christian uh, language and connecting with Gandhi, who saw this space and brought it into, into the, the, the polis, right? He, that's where white man, black man, Gentile Jew, diversity will find a connection I may not get there with you. That kind of talk. I'm suggesting he's looking at here, at this place. So what I'd like to do is to think, think with me, please. Join me and think with me. I'm thinking out loud in this meditation to look at America now in the light of America here and the declaration and the constitutional language seen here as this language and this code. That's the code of the Constitution. It's important because we constantly, if we don't have this, erase all of this and just have this, and here's our Constitution, and we the people is here. We can't be we the people. We the people means we're connected in a deep way with our diversity, not to give up our diversity. Because when we cross from this space, which is a fragment, into this space here, it, you, you tap your infinite link with the field. It's a continuum. Unum is a continuum unum in boundless diversity without being broken. That's a continuum. That means every word is touching every word. Every field here is connected here. Every narrative is connected here. Every, every paradigm, every discipline, every sub-language, every subculture is connected here. Big Bang, here. Genesis, here. Whatever they are. So fragmentation and polarization reaches a common ground when you reach the unum space. Why? Because everything is interconnected. You can't break a piece of unum off. You, if you call this ohm, you can't break a piece of ohm. You're going to get ohm. And that's why Blake, the, the, the gifted mystical poet, said there's infinity in a grain of sand and eternity in an hour. Why? Because of interconnectivity. So our geniuses were tapping this and trying to help humanity get the code, but we keep downloading it here to our terms, and we blow it. If you write God here, then God is dead. And the calculus and the, and the code kills him. This is not the God code. The God code is infinite flow. And, and if we are holding the covenant of God, the God covenant code, the political band of uh, code, a, a culture code is a, a political convention, law, agreement that we live by. And if we're living by this agreement and this code, it's man-made and not, not source-made. And the call to rise to who we are as Logos sapiens is trying to get the entering in the code, the source code, not, 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 not the monocode, but the dialogue code. The Logos code is dialogos. We can't have dialogue here, but we cannot be we the people unless we have dialogue. This is monologue. We can't make peace here across boundaries. We've got to go deep. We've got to have the skills and literacy of dialogue to have a democracy. We the people can't be here, it's here. One nation indivisible with liberty, that cannot be here. That's, that's a serious matter. That's, an invisible, that's the invisible crisis. We're trying to make it visible now with Unum Source Science. They say, look, check it out. Our great, and listen to the Unum power and consensus of our great scriptures and wisdom teachers across the ages calling out for this emergency. So notice, notice this. I mean, these, these, these meditative 
diagrams or illustrations. Um, we're just capturing our thought as we go. It's like creating a, a live meditative PowerPoint as we go. And, and what we need to see is the infinite force. Do this experiment with me. The infinite force makes every thought possible. That's what this is. We're always in the inf infinite voltage. This is the infinite voltage here of unum pluribus. And nothing, it's sourcing all possibilities. Nothing can be outside of it. If you did this, you have demoted the infinite, you've othered it, you've othered it. And therefore it's no longer, you've, you've, you've overpowered it. That's baby science. People, you, no one, no ego tr person can step outside of the infinite force field. We're always situated within it. Everything is situated and held within the infinite. That's part of the science of the infinite. And what is not usually seen, what I think is new about this disclosure is that the infinite must be infinitely unum pluribus. That has not been sufficiently seen. Yes, God is one, but not one here. Infinite one, the infinite unum, is infinite pluribus. The, multiple, the abysmal diversity is already included and held together in the unum pluribus. That's one word for the infinite, for reality, for the source. And we've got to get real. If we want to get into react, we've got to move into the, this is unreal in some sense. It's cut off. We have our narratives. We have our, our, our visions of what is reality and worlds and worldviews and truths and my truth and your truth and different cultures have a different truth. But to get to source truth, unum truth, that's where we get the deep axioms. So what I'm suggesting is that every script and every scripture could not be outside of this field, and if we're putting it here rather than here, it makes all... So if we put the, the a constitutional visioning and thinking of we the people here, right, then we may be blowing it. it. It may be more powerful and deep than we think. And that goes for all of our scriptures. If we have, if we have the Buddha teaching us this, and we put it here and, and read the Buddha here, we're blowing it. If we hear Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita teaching Arjuna, who is a broken person, how to rise into the Om, and we're reading it here, we're blowing the yoga. If we're hearing Yahweh, the call of the Word of God, and we're putting the Word of God here, we're seriously blowing it. If Allah is calling us, surrender to Allah, and we're putting the scripture of Allah here, we're blowing Allah. And that goes all the way across the planet. And science, too, if science is here, it's cut off from the unum source of reason. And therefore, you're going to get different scientific narratives, always with a certain conceptual lens. And so what we see in, in the world of phenomena is under that conceptual paradigm or lens. What does that mean? Is that true, or is it a partial truth seen here, but not getting to the source of science? This is very serious, because if we are cut off from the source code, we're fragmented. And if we're fragmented, the best we can have is opinion. And if we have opinion, we don't have truth. And if we don't have truth and knowledge and laws and science and ethics, then we're scattered and we're going to be divided. Divided across all of our, so to, to, to say almost in a boastful way, if America is here, we're a multicultural society. That is not a good thing to boast if you're here, because if you're multicultural without the unum, then you're a divided nation of subcultures. Each perspective is a different world, and that's where we get we have the bipartisan bi system. And can we be bipartisan? Or is it a compromise between, uh, you know, a, a compromise between polar opposites across a divided line? And could it be that now America still has not listened deeply to the axioms and laws and foundations and principles of our founding documents and visionaries that were tapping the space that all of our great wisdom and scriptures have been tapping. If that's so, that's extremely serious. This is ecumenical space. It's not here. Ecumenical doesn't mean there is no unity. You just have uh, er, er, everything goes in this marketplace and you have your pluralism, radical, separated pluralism is not going to be a, a dialogue and democracy. So the point I'd like to make, let's start over and look, let's, let's go more deeply into the American 
seen culturally as an example, as one laboratory example of applying source science. Again, we could go to any place, to so all peoples across the planet have, have to make this crossing. You know? but, but, but let's see, is this place, uh, does it have violence and polarization and dysfunction at the very deepest level that we're not yet crossing into we, the people? Are we a we here, or do we have to go into the unum pluribus source code? Do we need the source code, the double bracket intelligence of deep dialogue to enter into pluribus unum, we the people? Because if, we were, if we're scattered here according to our different narratives and worldviews and perspectives and, and, and cult, subcultures without a common ground, there, this is the common ground. And if there's no common ground, all we have is opinion. And therefore, it's going to be fighting out for the spin doctors to get your opinion to look true. And one side denies, the other one affirms. And we have alternative truths. And if in the current political scene in America there's, a, there's an election that divides the people down the middle, one culture with one perspective against the other with different principles and values claiming to both be tapping the Constitution and being true to the Constitution, where is the Constitution? Who has it? Does one side of the polar war have it rather than the other? <coughs> So if the cultural space is split and polarized in, mel in multiple ways, how can it be governed? That's a gridlock culture. And if the culture is coming from a, a, a dominant regime, then are we really free? Are we the home of the brave and the land of the free? Are we a first world country? Or are we derivative along with other suffering human cultures? in a divided place of, 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 of inherent violence, <coughs> excuse me, without peace. <coughs> that feels good to be open, clear the space open. This is the Unum Logos Sophia. At every point, wherever you are in this point, it is fractal. <clears throat> so even if <clears throat> we're here in this separated space, I'd like to accentuate this. Here's the motherboard that is generating, <coughs> excuse me. I and the other, connected. The other is already within the one and mutual. There's mutuality. Everything is implied in everything else. Whereas here there's a division. And here is a conscious person with his or her lens this is the screen of our culture and our life. And these are our worldviews that are polarized, let us say. And we cannot be united. Because to be united is to enter into the unum of deep dialogue. What is deep dialogue? Well, when you're here, your, your lens, your mono lens, gives you your world. And when you talk to another with your lens, you are in monologue and not dialogue. The dialogue, you've got to go dialogos, into the logos. The Greek, Sophia, <clears throat> the Greek name for the infinite word, the infinite field, the infinite reason, the light of reason, the, the awakened space, self-evident truths of logo sapien humans in the unum space. That's the culture here and this culture here. And so if all through millennia of evolution, the infinite force is always operating, calling us to rise. And our great teachers are serving this force, the source force. This is the truth force, the source force. When you say the force awakens, it's this force in the Star Wars movie. <clears throat> or when an athlete is in the zone, she, the force is with her, the team is here. They're clicking 
in a, in a, in a deep ballet of connectivity when you're in the zone. And athletes and musicians and lovers, when you're in the zone, you know you're in the zone here. Because you're all, it's always accessible. We always have access to that. And that's the point I'd like to, to help, because we can say, all right, let's defend America here. Let's defend it for a moment. The British Declaration of Independence. We won't have an external monarchy ruling us. We're going to rule ourselves. And so we have our declaration, we have our constitution, beautiful, amazing breakthroughs of genius. It's a holy experiment unfolding. Let's do this. And slaves, slavery, remember now that the founding story is that the coming of Europeans to the Americas and discovering the Indians, the first people, first nations, there was abysmal violence in that whole uh, unfolding of the diaspora and the arrival of the immigrants and so forth and the first peoples. I won't go into that, but just, just remember that that objectification of the other is already going on. It's implanted. When our immigrants came over the ocean, what did we bring with our consciousness as we sought freedom of life, liberty, and religious freedom from persecution in the old country, right? What cultural lens did we bring? Did we still have the information lens to talk about it? Very likely, of course, we did. And if, is that a colonized space? Of course it is. So being colonized is not only having an external regime ruling you. If you're carrying the technology of objectification that cuts you off from the Ulam source, then in a, in a way, our great teachers have seen this for millennia, we are colonized, we're not free. We're bound by conventions and codes and ideologies and worldviews and narratives that are keeping us from entering into the wisdom space of, of enlightenment and awakened culture. So we might say, we've done so much. We've come so far since our founding in 1776. And we have. Slaves, let's emancipate, free the slaves. Split of the Mason-Dixon, north and south, never mind the split. And, and, and Lincoln's trying to keep a more perfect union, to establish the union, not the UNAM, but let's keep the union. And when we had the United States of America, the United Colonies, and all of the states, the 13 colonies originally, and it grew. Were we united? What united us? Is it a, is it a single bracket u unity or is it an unum, a unity of the source code, which is a real unity? Where is the unity of the united cultures and colonies and the united subcultures? Of all of the cultures now that we become a global ecumenical civic space, of all of these different diverse cultures and worldviews and subcultures, and yet we say we're, we're one people. One nation, undivided, indivisible, under logos, under God, whatever the language, under source, with liberty and justice for all. It appears not. Not in this space. If America is still dominated by this, we're still colonized. Then evicting the British at a great cost is part one, a first stage, of decolonizing the colonized mind and culture making. Because if we keep the codes and, 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 and our declaration of, of independence is saying we've got to separate from political bands that hold us, bring us together and bind us to another that compromises our dignity. If our dignity and freedom and worth and uh, uh, independence is in a local sapien life space and culture space, if this is the civic space of the awakened American culture and we're still here, then, then that's a huge crisis. We're still colonized. And yet we think and believe and allege that we are free people. What is freedom, really? Existential, ontological freedom. If we're living with a technology of narrative making of ourselves and giving our IDs and our identities and our ethnic codes where there is racism and sexism and homophobia in the marketplace of our, of our, of our culture. 
So if we, the people, confer the power to the government, and now we have an internal government, not the British are not on the scene, and now we're self-ruling, but who is governing? And, and where are we, the people, giving our consent? Are we truly we, or are we a, a cluster of negotiated subcultures, a bundle of cultures, an association of cultures that are trying to negotiate some common rules of procedure? What is the United States of America as a people, we the people? Is it here with conventional agreements that we make, or is it going into the source code, the unum source that holds us together, that we're already together here too? Because we're already in the space. So thinking out loud with you, let's think together. We can surely say we've come a long way since 1776. Women can vote, freed the slaves, we survived the Civil War, it appears, which could have split us apart at great bloodshed, at great cost. And civil rights, did we really overcome the racism, which is the form of this. Are gays human? Do they have rights? All humans, according to the Declaration, all humans are created by our creator, our source with a right to life, liberty, dignity, nobility, and freedom. Is that the case in our culture? So even it appears that the force is calling us constantly. This is the point I'm making, that the infinite force is holding us in every breath, and we are evolving, and we're here. And wherever we are here now, we have had to, to, to negotiate and make, in light of the Constitution, if... if uh, uh, black folk are human and have to have full rights as, as citizens, then they must be free. We must end slavery. If women are full citizens, equal, they have the right to vote. If gays are full human, they have the right to freedom. And, and so on. So although we are changing and modifying the civic space and trying to upgrade our rules in certain ways, and that's progress, no doubt about it, that's progress. But are we still in this dominant, colonized space that at the deepest level is keeping us broken? Have we truly overcome racism? Do we, do we not have to cross into the love, compassion, I, thou space to see ourselves in the other? The way Jesus said, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was black, you saw me. When I was Asian, when I was Latino, when, when, when I was a woman, you, you, you took care of me. When I was a child, when I was handicapped in certain ways. Right? That's the I-thou connection. And that's, that's, that's Buddha talk, that's yoga talk. That's a light of reason, a rational culture, living in the light of logos, lives that way. These are universal laws and axioms. So the fact that we have been over, uh, over two, 200 years making changes doesn't mean we've given up the deepest ingrained mind-operating motherboard that's a smotherboard that is colonizing us and breaking us apart. And right now, if we're not seeing the invisible crisis, then the democracy is in deep, urgent disrepair. And it's not a matter of draining the swamp in Washington, D.C. It is looking across our culture and each person looking in her mirror, each person looking at the person in the mirror. Which mirror are we looking in? What starting is that song, I'm starting with the person in the mirror. That means each of us has to ask, am I, am I living here? We may not have seen it before. Okay, we have an excuse. I didn't know this. I didn't know about the source. I didn't know about unum pluribus. That sounds lovely. I didn't realize that our declaration of a, 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 a constitutional thinking may have been tapping the deep, noble axioms of global reason for all people rather than here. I didn't know that. But now that it's being called out to our attention, right, and saying, check out your motherboard, call it out and see it, because the great wisdom teachers right, saw that this is a problem. This culture here is unsustainable. It cannot flourish. Humans can't flourish here. We're not free. It's not life. It's not liberty. It's not freedom. It's not well-being. Being is here. That's a consensus of wisdom. Being is in the zone. Being is tapping the source of the unum pluribus. In deep dialogue, we need deep dialogue art 
to be a human, a rational being, not monologue, where we're slashing each other with our, with our lens. Everything we see, I see with my lens. And how many lenses are there? Boundless. So if we're raising our children and we're objectifying, when you put a person here in your field of vision, and this is your vision, well, this vision can blind you to who you are. It can blind you to what's causing you and allowing you to see your technology of language and word and consciousness and culture making it empowers you to see. Because check out what you've got, all of your events. And you can change your paradigm and change your belief system, and change your worldview and have a different narrative. But it's all within that space, which keeps us apart. <laughs> so if we're implanted in deep monologue, then this force is calling us now more than ever. It's saying, okay, folks, you've done well. Good, you, you took stage one of letting go of slavery, but we're still enslaved. As long as you remember, we're still enslaved. We may have got, opened up the colonies, but we're still colonized. All cultures, the British monarchy and the British people, too, have to undo the colonial mind. India has to undo the colonial mind. When Gandhi is seeking to remove the British Raj from India, in that version of a, rev a revolution, to liberate India, there was still a deep split in the heart of India that broke Gandhi's heart. When the Muslims and the Hindus were killing each other in the war, and he was fasting to near death until they would stop the violence. And that ripped India apart into Pakistan and India. What caused that? This, the Muslims and the Hindus, across, this sets up divides across people. Palestine and Israel in the Middle East, intractably broken. Where is the peace? You can't find it here in this technology. Diplomacy, United Nations, peacemaking. United Nations are not united here. United means here. The United Nations, the United States, the European Union. Union is not here. It's a disunion. It's falling apart. It's, 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 it's disintegrating because it was never integrated. So when did we integrate all of these uh, you know, states, divi divided states of America? When, and not just the states, it's not just the physical state boundaries, but cultural boundaries. Because when you look at the election map, the red states and the blue states, those are different states, and they're really at odds in two different. So if America is, is politically divided into two cultures, who is going to bring the people together? How are we going to bring the people together? We can't do it here in the monologue space. We've got to go dialogue. It's not just bipartisan here. It's going into the sacred space of America. We've got to grow up as a culture, all of us, to enter into the code of Logosophia, the Christ code, the Buddha code, the God code, the, the Allah code, the Tao code, Ubuntu code of Africa. I am because that you are. You are, I am because you are, the I thou. That's a golden rule. Treat the other as yourself. On the other as you that's a golden rule is here it's not here here we're slashing each other with our lands and if that's a form of violence then our culture is producing and reproducing our kids to be slashed with this technology it's a form of child abuse we don't intend it we're good people humans are good people we're good beautiful people but if we're dominated by a technology that's so implanted in our culture that's cutting us off and in in the biblical Narrative, that is sin. This is the cut of sin, separation from source. In the East, samsara, cutting us off from Atman, Brahman, Buddha space, Dharma. This is huge. And it's this motherboard, that's this motherboard that's keeping us trapped, colonized people. So yes, we've made progress. The British left India, the British left uh, you, you, the colonies. And we proceeded, and we, we had freed the slaves, and women can vote, and we've been doing good things, good movements within this space. Because the force is calling us constantly. I call it living under the infants. The infinite force is operative at every speck, in every breath, in every moment, all the time, calling us, every person, every breath. There's no place that is outside of the force. The infinite unum force is calling, and therefore we are listening in some ways. The, the, the great news about America is that we're, in our founding, we have principles and axioms that we understand. All people are free. All people have a right. Even, this, even understanding at this level is good because it's, it's getting us to correct 
some deep pathological dysfunctional ways of having slaves, of women aren't free and equal to vote and equal pay, and gays have rights, and they're with dignity for all, and transgender people, and all of that. They're all, all human. And so the humanized space is here of dignity and an autonomy and sacredness for all humans. That's a language, unequivocally. Founded, given by our creator. That's in the declaration. <clears throat> so when we say we are so clear that we're going to hold the, uh, the constitution as our scripture, and we're going to maintain our constitution and be true, as if it's a kind of dead scroll that's been written back in 1776 rather than a living script, a pluribus unum living dynamic script that is irrevocably clear in the I thou sacred space. That you're, that, there's no messing with that across religions and worlds. But the 1776 axioms and principles are living, fractal, dynamic. And we, the people, now have to co-found ourselves now to deal and evolve our co-founding. It's not a done deal. It's not that we worked it out in 1776, obviously. So we have to work it and become aware. And this, this science, source science and diagnostic, diagnostic and trying to place our sacred constitutional language and thoughts and axioms and principles and foundations here in the Logos, in the light of Logos, where it's calling out, is going to require us humans to move together, to revise the dominance of a code that holds us and blinds us from having a deeper sight and a deeper vision. So of course things seem to be improving. And look at science. Look at medical technology. Look at the technologies of internet and televisions and jets and telecommunications around the globe and internet. That's fantastic. It's not that we're doing it. It's we're being sourced. Why? Because we couldn't get any of that without the source. That's just a great axiom. We cannot, if, if I take credit for, I have a patent, look what I did, look what I invented. I invented the light bulb. I invented electricity or discovered it. Doesn't matter. I want credit. I want my patent. Right? I invented the computer science. I, I invented the, the computer. I figured it out all on my own. No way. The source is holding every breath, every thought, every insight, every breakthrough, every technological advance is coming from the deep technology of the source, the infinite connect connectivity that turns on the light bulbs and gets us to see. So our march to freedom as humans into a, a, an awakened America Think of the before and after. If we got the code, which is what? The code of deep interconnectivity, right? And we haven't spoken of much of that because that my whole life as a philosopher, teaching 49 years now at Haverford College and trying to help students to understand when you cross from this language to this, check it out. How do words behave here? When you say I am, that's not referring to some pronoun. That's not a pronoun. That's aming. When the runner is in the zone and she is the running, She's one with the run. When you're yoga and you are the yoga, when you're when the when you're in yoga breath, it's not I am breathing. You don't do yoga here. Yoga is letting go of separation, the principle of separation, so that breath can breathe you, love can hold you, life can hold you. There's an inversion from a, the perversion of putting this first to putting this first. When you put the feel first, and suddenly the language changes over completely. Says, wow. It's not I'm doing yoga. Yoga, Om, is doing me. It's not I'm doing Christ. I'm being Christed. It's not I'm doing Buddha. The Dharma, the Buddha, flows through me. There's an inversion from putting this first to putting this first. And the axiom of our great wisdom teachers and scriptures is first things first. Abraham put me first. Israel put me first. Allah put me first. Sur surrender to Allah. Put Allah first. Allah. So yes, it looks as if we're making great progress and technolo technologically and in terms of, of, of breakthroughs in science, wonderful. But give credit where it's due because you couldn't science. Whatever your mental framework is and your narrative and your paradigm and your belief system at the moment as it's evolving is that allows you to go from Newton to Einstein and have an Einstein world and from, Coper from Ptolemy to Copernicus and so on, as you change your lens and your worldview changes, it couldn't happen without the source. 
And first science, source science, the great noble tradition of source science, get to the source. Of course, if you got this code, you, you'd be able to understand these codes. All of these codes are coming from the source. Nothing can happen without the source holding it. So to give credit, the world is getting wired. America, for example, and the whole globe is getting wired with internet and social media. And things are changing dramatically. Thank God. Thank source. Right? Why? Because we're being prepped and prepared to, to deal with the life and death crisis of being impaled in an unsustainable cultural, personal, and institutional space. Our educational system, which is dominated by this technology, and teaching our children here in our colleges and schools, and secondary schools and high schools and, and, and graduate schools, and dominated by this technology. And we, we're, we're seeing that we, to be a literate being, we've got to tap the logos. Rational beings, the deeper code of reason and, and language and meaning and truth and science when we get to the source. So this has been missing, but it has been always present and calling us and operating. We've been living under the influence of the infinite force, LUI. I joke about it a bit when I'm playing with my students in the class. I said, you can get a DUI of driving under the influence. But humans, I hope you see, you're LUI. You're living under the influence of the infinite force that's operative at every breath. You couldn't take one breath. You couldn't now see anything. You couldn't say one word. If you say there is no truth, you're using it. If you say there is no meaning, you're using it. If you say language is limited, you're using it. Anything you think or say is in the source. And you couldn't have that without the source. If that's so, think about it in this meditation. If that's true, if we really see that every moment where I am, that's why when you say there's that of God in every person, that's just not wishful thinking. That is basic science. In every point, there is the infinite. You can't, you're always in the field. And if that's true, if there's that of the infinite and source in every person, in every breath, at every moment, you don't say, I wish I could see. I wish I could see a miracle because seeing is a miracle, being, existing, just being a conscious at all. Of any, even if I'm negative conscious, I'm doubting, I'm, I'm despairing, I, I, I'm nihilistic, nothing makes sense, I'm still in the zone. Why do we see that? Because this place is just filled with so many broken different nihilism, theism, I believe in God, and that's my absolute, Christ is my Lord, Allah is true. Right? The Big Bang is true. The American Constitution is true. Whatever it may be, we hold on uh, to, 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 to those beliefs <clears throat> in this space. But, but if you're not grounded, then, then your truth is then partial. That's why it said, this is opinion. Then that's your opinion. And we just have broken opinions. So in the divided America, for example, between what both sides uh, of the culture, the two cultures, each having their narrative and their truth and their values and their constitution, and each wants to have the, uphold the, con the constitution. And the constitution may be deeper than we realize. And it may, not, it may not be a fixed and dead script, but a living, vital, pluribus unum axiom that is present itself. Because when you cross here, what is reality when you cross into the infinite field? <clears throat> this is huge what I'm suggesting. We can't push the infinite away, wherever we are, in whatever worldview. You may be the most radical atheist or nihilist or whatever your belief system. You couldn't have a belief system without it. You couldn't utter one word without the source. It's gross ignorance to not see that, ontological ignorance. And if you realize the science of the infinite means infinite pervades the entire field in every moment, in every morsel, in every breath, in every event. <clears throat> then which lens are we using? This lens to understand it or this lens to understand? If you say there's that of God in every person, that's huge news. There's that of source in every person. And that's nirvana. Why? This is not nirvana. Samsara is not nirvana. And when you say the kingdom of God is at hand, it means at every point. It's right here. You can't step outside. This is, this is nirvana. Even though the, the hellish... Violence is unfolding of terrorism and all of the breakdowns of genocides and holocausts 
and the, the, the breakdown of nature and the, and, and, and the gouging of nature and so forth, all of that violence which comes from this technology. If this is a place of deep suffering, existential, because we're cut off from our source, and this is the place, nirvana. What is nirvana? It's the bliss of being. It's the bliss of I, thou. Love, passion, compassion, ethics, care, faith. What is faith? Highest knowledge. Faith is not here. Faith is not I believe in something and I believe on faith. Faith is tapping the zone where you're in communion with the source. So faith is the highest form of knowing. Because when you're sciencing, you know it. And that's the medicine of our great teachers. And we can't get that medicine here because this block, this guard, is blocking us from access to the full medicine of our scriptures. If I put Jesus here, it's not the same as Jesus here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This Jesus, this gospel, is not the same as this gospel. This is literal truth here. Krishna speaking in the Gita is here. Buddha's revelations here. Rumi, the great mystic, Islam, here. So, so, so this is enormous. So the experiment, the meditation we're doing is like, look, everything that happens in our life is always in the zone, always in the, I, I, within the double bracket space, the infinite field. And the infinite pervades every moment, which means what? And this is what I was leading up to, that we can't push the infinite away. We can't say God, if you use God talk. God is over there transcended and we're here in the created world. It's a great ontological blunder to think that way. You cannot exclude the infinite from any point. Which means what? Presence is at hand. Reality is presence. It's not a dead zone. Because the infinite and the great theologians knew this in first science. That is there consciousness on the ground floor? Yes, infinite. Which means what? That the energy of reality is awareness. Illuminated awareness, boundless, infinite illumination flowing, the light of reason. Reality is the light of reason. Is it intelligent? Infinitely intelligent. It's not stupid and dead. It's not dead matter. That's that, that way of thinking, if you press it and critique it with first philosophy and source science, you'll see how it falls apart. It's got to. This is not guesswork. That the ground floor of reality is infinite, the infinite, infinite, the unum, the infinite unum is pluribus, so it's multiplicity and unity, and that the law and axiom of that space is I thou and deep dialogue. And that's a human space, and we are born for that. This is our code of our life, and our great teachers are bringing this to us. And we're, we're living in this code. If you want to keep the covenant of God, we've got to go here. This is the covenant. Covenant is the code, and the code is the source, and the source is the Logos, Sophia. The Yahweh, the Allah, the Buddha, the Om, the Atman, the Tao. The code, the unemplorable code. So it means that the infinite is at hand in your hand, in your body, we're sacred. We're, we're sacred beings. Each person is sacred. Your, our bodies are temples of Logosophia. And to honor each other in that space as sacred beings, that's what our declaration is calling for. Everyone is born with the dignity of being in this space. That's nobility, that's freedom, because this is not freedom, this is bondage. So yes, we've made progress, but the progress is the call of the source. And what is the progress for? Well, look at the state of America now. People are worried. They're feeling insecure. The people are stirring. The country is divided. It's the divided state of America. And who's going to bring unity to we the people here? And if it's not we the people, we're not a democracy. The consent of the governed. The art and science of we is to be in the dialogue code of the source, of unum pluribus. And that's where a global civic space with multiple worldviews, perspectives, and diversity, and deep diversity of every individual can be safe and flourishing together in the unum pluribus of this space. This is the ecumenical space of enlightenment, of wisdom, of scripture, of science. Because science is the unum light of reason. 
So I think the invisible crisis, to make it visible and to say, wow, if people say, wow, I didn't realize we have an implant of a motherboard that objectifies and ma makes everything into objects and entities, and it's my I-it world, and that's my stage of my culture, and I could, if I am able to separate from this and complete the unfinished American Revolution and say I am, if each American citizen, if we had a national strike in this nation, and not to boycott what the government is doing, it's deeper than that. If every person says, am I slashing myself and others and slashing God or slashing source with the technology of my culture that's so implanted, my code, my culture code is slashing my children and myself, my lover, and other worlds and cultures and nature, and I can let that go? As our great teachers say, we have a choice. We don't have to be in a, this addictive pattern. <laughs> if we have a choice, American freedom, human freedom, is to let go of a smotherboard mind operating system that's so deeply implanted we can't even see it because we're seeing here but not here and certainly not there and to really begin to see this and say wow that's what being an awakened loco sapien is that's an american that's a global citizen why global because now i can open my heart and mind to others across borders and we're not broken and divided we can be we the people here so use your imagination let's We'll wrap this up. I went on much longer than I expected. But this is so serious. I'm, I'm taking the time with you to think this through. This is like the culmination of our three meditations, the preface and the transition, these five you know, journeys together into this. I hope it's beginning to resonate with you. Think of culture here. What Before the code, what is it? Broken, fragmented, slashing, sexism, Racism, divisions, divided nation, we're not an unum, we're not a union. We're not one nation indivisible, we're, we're many subcultures clustered and broken and not united. And we can't just declare united, you gotta, you gotta earn it. The unum unites and that's the continuum. And to enter the continuum we've gotta upgrade our mind codes and culture codes to go into the I thou, intelligence of deep dialogue life. If we were to call a strike of the heart and saying, let's end it, folks, let's let this go. Let's, we see it now. We see it more clearly. Let's rise to our constitution. If we honor the sacredness of our scripture of constitution, and our constitution is calling us to unum pluribus in this sacred space of the light of logos, and we've been missing it, then it's time. If we've been reading our gospels here, the good news, and not hearing the better news, which is the Christ is the living code, if we're doing yoga here, but we're not realizing yoga is to let this go and enter in the Om space. If we're Buddhists and we're following the Buddha's Dharma, but we're here and not here, it's time to let it go. Time to separate. Time to do independence. Independence, let it go. So we can rise. The whole planet needs to do this, the human family, to come together as one family. Uh, Abraham, the father of all nations. Why? Because he, he let this go and put this first. Yahweh is first. He sacrificed Isaac. We're children of Abraham, in that sense. The father of all nations is the source of all nations, the code of all nations. That's the, the culture code of all cultures, is here. So once we begin to see that this is a violent place, and what are we doing to our children? If our child is here and she'd be a sacred being, a human, and we want to raise him or her in the code of a deep dialogue, sacredness, as a sacred human, and our, our, uh, and our home life is a sacred temple, space, a civic space, our homes, right? Wouldn't we want to do that? If we knew that there was a deeper Jesus here than we knew, wouldn't that be magnificent? If God is deeper, because God's got to be global. God can't be tribal. That violates the whole idea of the infinite. The infinite has to be global in the sense of for all possible worlds. That's what global means. To go global, not local and tribal. Tribal is this. Colonized is this. <clears throat> Any human or culture or institution that is laboring under the information-based objectification here and the law A is A and living that logic and that code right, is in a form of violence. And once we see that, we say, I want to end the violence. 
We want to start with the man in the mirror, the person in the mirror. Who is that? This person or this person? And I'm asking her to change her ways. What do you mean? You've got to let this go. It's not just changing in here. And this is the final point I'll make. When you don't have any of this, and you don't even know that you're here in the space, but all you have is here, which is what tends to happen. Of course, people don't know that there's a mind operating smotherboard that's holding us captive. We tried our act activism. We tried to solve our problems here. This is the final <coughs> theme in this meditation. Our best wisdom coaches and life, life coaches are trying to make it better for us and teach us about wisdom and tell us all the good news about wisdom and live from love and live from now and, and, and go into integral intelligence and speaking wisdom to the culture here but not calling this out. It's, it's getting gushed away. It's not registering as it should. Because when we call this out and point this out and understand the different technology, wisdom is the call to go here, is to call this out. If you're not doing that, if our teachers and life coaches, as brilliant as they are, are not calling out the smotherboard that's deeply implanted and not to see that our great wisdom teachers have been in different ways calling this out for centuries and to, as integral to their teaching to help the people see this, and therefore to know that we've got to make a crossing. It's not going to be easy, it's scary, because to let go of the familiar, your narrative, your idea as you know it, it's going to be a very scary thing to do, to, to step back from this and cross over. We know that. <clears throat> we need to help each other out here, across the planet, across the nation, to say, let's do this. If we were going to have the ultimate spiritual strike, rational strike, civic strike, say, this civic space here is busted. And it's ir irreparably behind these walls. And the way to repair it is to rise to a deeper code of love and compassion, which is the call of our great scriptures and teachers across the planet. This journey is vital. That's our um, unfinished American revolution. And it's revolutionary to say, I am. Because when you say, I am, you, you're daring to say, I let this go now. It's going to take me a lifetime to practice, to, to, to vent this out, because this is so deep but I'm going to start my cultural innovation. My, my new revolution, my new life rev revolution is to say enough and to say I am. I'm going to practice I am. That's what wisdom is. Buddha is saying we can rehabilitate our consciousness from this addiction to this. That's Buddha. Jesus, unless you die, you can't be born again. Rebirth. Krishna, do the yoga. Sacrifice and let this go. Every breath of your life is sacrificing this. That's, a, that's Isaac. Sacrifice that until you clear your karma and can rise in the Om, in the Gandhi space, in the Mahatma space, the Om space. That's yoga. That's Jesus. That's Socrates. That's Buddha. And you, all the great wisdom teachers are trying to help us make the crossing, but it's so difficult, and we remain here. But that's the invisible crisis. It's urgent. It's life and death. And we've got to find a way to call this out. Call out the smotherboard. See it. See the devastation. Listen to our great wisdom teachers and enlightenment. Listen to the logos. Listen to our founding document, 1776. And see, we've got to separate from this and come into the noble, awakened space of American poets. That's our unfinished American revolution. That's our unfinished human evolution. And we're all in this together. And I really wanted to help bring this out. And God bless America. Source, bless America. <clears throat>